Hi, my name is Ray at Water Heaters Now, and today what I'm going to show you is how to do an annual service on a Ream Marathon water heater. But first, I should tell you one of the reasons this heater is so special. Um, there's not a piece of steel in the tank whatsoever. In fact, the tank is made out of plastic, so you don't need the use of an anode rod, which helps to preserve the steel tank. So there's less parts and less ports in it. And as a result, the manufacturer gives you a limited lifetime warranty on the tank itself. One of the reasons that people like to use a big marathon is if they have off-peak electricity. And as a result, you only get power to the heater for like four hours a day. But when you have 105 gallons of hot water, you're probably not going to use more than that anyway. So on off-peak, it's a great way to go. Um, it has about four and a half inches of insulation. So it's really a great water heater if you need to go electric. Electric is the most expensive way to heat water, but if you have a large use of water that you need, a marathon's a great way to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut the water off to it. We're gonna drain it down and cleanse the bottom of the tank. Then I'm gonna show you how to set the thermostats on it and to check to make sure that everything looks good at the elements. And uh, that's a full service on an electric water heater. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna take this yellow handle, which is the ball valve to the water heater itself. We're gonna turn that off. And then from there, we're gonna go over to the electrical panel and turn the breaker off to the unit before we begin to drain it. So on this particular heater, you can see, you always wanna look over on the side of the inside of the door. It's gonna tell you what breakers go to what pieces of equipment. And in this case, number 17 and number 19 say water heater, which makes sense because each of these sections are called a pole. And this is a double pole breaker. It takes up two spots, number 17 and number 19. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn the power off to the water heater. And there's always a little on and off lettering engraved right in the breaker to let you know that it is in fact off. So now we're good to drain the water heater. Okay, so now I have the hose connected to the drain at the bottom of the heater. I'm just gonna turn the valve on and we're gonna drain it out into the floor drain. So at this time, what we have is we have the entire heater drained. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce water to it. Um, just a little bit though, we're gonna open the valve for just a few seconds. It's gonna swoosh the bottom of the tank and then we're gonna close the valve again and allow that to drain, which will take five to 10 seconds. And basically what we're doing, it's equivalent when you have a kitchen sink and you got messy dishes, you finish the dishes. Um, but there's some stuff in the bottom of the sink, so you take your sprayer and go all the way around. The way the fill tube in this heater is, is designed to do that same cleansing. So you have to drain it completely, and then do this process a couple of times, and it'll be totally clean at the bottom. It'll help preserve the quality of your water inside the tank. So I'm gonna turn this on for just a couple of seconds, and then turn it back off. We'll give it about five, 10 seconds to drain out of the bottom of the tank, and then we'll repeat that process, turn it on, allow a little bit of water in, turn it off, and we'll again, we'll give it five to 10 seconds to drain. Um, and at that point, I'm gonna close the valve in the bottom so no more water can come out, and we're ready to fill the heater back up. All right, so we're gonna come to the bottom of the heater, take the valve, and we'll turn that off. And then we can disconnect the hose. So now we're ready to turn the main valve on and fill the heater completely. Okay, now that the water heater's drained and we've cleaned all the dirt from the bottom of the heater, we're gonna turn water back onto the unit. And we're gonna let this fill up, which is gonna take a little bit of time, but in about five or six minutes, we will have a laundry tub faucet wide open and it'll be spitting and sputtering a little bit. But then when we have solid water coming through the hot side of that faucet, That'll tell us that the tank is completely full and only then is it safe to turn the power back onto the heater. If you turn the heater on with any air in the heater whatsoever, it'll break the elements and you'll have to replace them. So always make sure you fill your electric heater full, 100% with solid water coming out of faucets before you turn the power back on. Okay, so the last thing we need to do with the Marathon heater is just turn the power back on. Water is solid in the system so it's safe to do so. We'll just turn that back on and close the panel. You can always put your ear up next to the heater 
on the side of it and you'll hear a gentle hum of that electric element lets you know that things are running. So let's check that out. Okay, well that's it. So I'm just gonna listen for the drone. The element is located right behind the safety cover. So I'm gonna listen. And you hear just a little bit of a hum and a drone lets you know that the elements are working, the water heater's heating. In about 45 minutes to an hour, they're gonna have water back up and running. And that's how you service your marathon heater. You should do it every year. So thanks for listening.